Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Too rough land to be farmland, isn't it? Oh. Oh, look at that! Look at the patina on that! Oh my god, my hands are shaking, mate. Oak Island's buried mysteries, with each dig bringing us closer to the truth. As we go down into the depths, understanding mysterious clues and finding ancient artifacts, we realize that the U.S. government might be hiding about Oak Island. The government never told us this terrible truth about Oak Island. Let's move forward to the video and see what has been hidden all along. Looking forward to the exploration of Lot 5 on Oak Island, Rick experiences a sense of thrill and relaxation with the company of metal detection expert Gary Drayton and archaeologist Laird Niven. This venture marked the end of a lengthy wait, and Rick couldn't help but recognize the significance of the moment. As they approached Lot 5 on Oak Island's western edge, the air was filled with anticipation. Gary, Drayton, and Laird Niven, acutely aware of the gravity of the situation, set foot on the rocky terrain determined to discover the secrets concealed beneath. The shadows of Robert's passion for the island's mysteries lingered, and Laird was particularly excited about the idea of entering Lot 5. The hole in the narrative inspired them. They hoped to contribute to Robert's legacy by disclosing previously unknown chapters of Oak Island's history. As the team navigated the terrain, Gary's cutting-edge equipment proved to be an invaluable asset. The discovery of a survey marker signaled the start of their travel deep inside Lot 5. Oh. <laughs> uh, survey marker. Yep, that's the survey marker, mate. Amidst the stony area, they discovered a coin with amazing historical potential, implying a connection to the first millennium BC. They realized they had a piece of history that could throw light on the island's unclear past. Their excitement drove them to the interpretive center, where they sought the assistance of archaeologist Laird Nevitt and archaeometallurgist Emma Culligan. The coin's composition and history became the focus of their investigation. A thorough examination revealed the coin's origin as an arsenical bronze artifact from the 1500s, adding another intriguing element to the enigma of Oak Island. This revelation fueled Rick and Gary's desire to uncover more relics and explore deeper into the island's history. The trek from Lot 5 to the Interpretative Center was a watershed moment in their quest as they considered the significance of their discoveries. The existence of esoteric metals, as well as the resonance of early activity on the island, suggested a larger story that remained to be discovered. Rick and Gary accepted the uncertainty, realizing that each artifact found added a piece to Oak Island's complicated puzzle. The appeal of the unknown drew them back to the field, eager to continue their exploration and contribute to the island's fascinating history. But now, as we look into the Oak Island's interpretive center, Alex Legina, Jack Begley, and archaeometallurgist Emma Culligan are looking forward to numismatist Sandy Campbell's arrival. Their attention is focused on a cut copper coin unearthed a week ago on Lot 5 by Rick Legina and Gary Drayton. X-ray fluorescence scanning suggests a possible pre-16th century origin. Sandy studies the coin and expresses curiosity regarding the XRF and CT images. The crew is captivated by the coin, which has distinctive markings and features. Emma delivers the XRF data, which show high copper, lead, and tin content, as well as a significant 0.51% arsenic level. That little tiny bump right there is arsenic. So is it arsenical bronze? Yeah, it would be like an arsenical bronze. Indicating a pre-1500 age. The introduction of 1.05% silver adds another degree of intrigue. Sandy investigates the coin's weight, implying that it may be used in trade transactions, which were widespread in antiquity. As the gram scale coin is accurately weighed, it becomes clear that it could be Roman. Sandy recognizes Roman-style characters and dates the coin between 300 BC and 500-600 AD. The discovery of a potentially 2,000-year-old Roman coin on Oak Island amazed the team. A call to Rick leads him down to the lab, where he receives the startling facts. The consequences are far-reaching, raising questions about how a Roman coin ended up in Lot 5. Laird Nevitt enters the discussion, noting that while Roman artifacts are uncommon in Nova Scotia, they can be found on the east coast of the United States. The team considers the relationship between the Roman coin and the previously discovered Roman-style road in Portugal. The potential of Templar influence develops, provoking questions about a dam feature, a medieval lid cross at Smith's Cove, and significant gold traces in the Money Pit area. Things progress, and the crew recognizes the importance of careful scientific investigation to resolve 
the complications. Lot 5 is now prominently shown on the Oak Island treasure map, leading the team to return to the spot for further examination. Sandy commits to continue studying, leaving the crew with a mix of excitement and eagerness for the next chapter in the Oak Island mystery. Now back to Lot 5, located in the center of Oak Island. Rick Legina and metal detector expert Gary Drayton begin another day of exploring. The sight of 42 flags inspires optimism, encouraging the couple to look into potential discoveries on the newly acquired site. Their enthusiasm is supported by recent discoveries, which include tools, a musket bullet, and a hand-forged half-coin that may lead up to the 16th century. Gary's metal detector alerts them to potential targets as they move across marked territory. The initial dig yields a thick and heavy blade-like tool, which may be ancient and suggests human activity prior to the discovery of the money pit. You know what that is? Nope. The look of it? This looks like some kind of blade-like tool. Excitement grows as they discover a piece of glazed pottery covered with elaborate patterns. The pottery, which dates back to the early 1700s and is of English origin, raises issues regarding the relationship between Lot 5 and expected English residents or military involvement. With more flags to explore, the team discovers more pieces of pottery, prompting a desire to learn more about the site's history. Archaeologist Laird Niven, along with colleagues Helen Sheldon and Craig Tester, joins the study. Expert study confirms the pottery as press-molded and dates it to 1740, providing vital insights about ceramics from that time period. Miriam Amiralt, another archaeologist, arrives to assist, and they discover more artifacts and rocks, indicating a major and likely pre-depositional feature. A remarkable discovery is Delftware, a tin-glazed porcelain from the mid-1700s, which is a first for Oak Island. The discovery of a hand-forged and strong copper nail, implying potential boat building or marine activity, adds to the mystery. The team accepts Lot 5's unexplained transformation that transports them back to the middle of the 1700s and calls into question earlier understandings of Oak Island's history. The newly discovered objects, which range from pottery to a copper nail, change the story and highlight the significance of Lot 5. Wow, look at this. Oh. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's not something we find every day. No, it isn't. The team holds on to the unfolding mystery, knowing that further revelations lie beneath the surface. The exploration continues, with Lot 5 emerging as a critical piece in resolving Oak Island's mysterious history. Continuing their quest, Rick Legina, Charles Barkhouse, and researcher Corey Mole travel to Liverpool, Nova Scotia, captivated by stone inscriptions that may be tied to the Oak Island mystery and the Knights Templar. They come to a carving of a goose paw, a symbol linked with Templars and medieval cathedral builders. This marking, differing from British broadhead symbols, suggests Templar influence. According to Corey, it could be a goose ball, a symbol of the Templar nations that represents the presence of a medieval cathedral builder. When they examine another engraving, they discover a globus crucigar, a symbol representing Christianity's rule that dates back to the 5th century AD. Rick recalls a similar symbol in Fontarcada in Portugal, built by Templars, which confirms the Templar connection. The team speculates on Masonic signs and the possibility of pre-Columbian visits to the New World. The team expresses their excitement and highlights the importance of future investigation into the meanings and historical significance of these inscriptions. The elaborate symbols, which may have conveyed special information to certain persons, pique the interest of early visitors to the region. They promise to investigate deeper, believing that these hints would reveal additional secrets in their quest to solve the Oak Island mystery. The illustrations offer a new path in the exploration, adding layers to the historical tale surrounding Oak Island and its interesting past. In their journey of uncovering the island's mysteries, Gary Drayton and Peter Fornetti go on a hopeful day of research on Oak Island's Lot 26, near the mysterious Stone Well. To their surprise, their trip begins with the discovery of a door hanger or hinge, a magnificent antique that was most likely handcrafted from wrought iron. The possibility that it dates back to before the 1830s adds to the mystery, especially considering its proximity to Samuel Ball's 18th century homestead, which raises doubts about its relationship to an older construction. So it's a little bit of history, and hopefully Cam and Leg yeah. can shed some light on it. All right, mate, keep moving. A copper alloy pipe tamper, which could have been used to pack tobacco in pipes, is discovered later. Gary acknowledges its relevance and urges the necessity for additional inquiry. As the relics amass, including a gate fastening, Gary emphasizes their relevance in unraveling the riddles surrounding Lot 26. 
The unexpected discovery of a second gate fastener deepens the puzzle, raising concerns about its existence in an area supposedly unconnected to doors. Gary emphasizes the importance of carbon dating and gaining understanding from these artifacts, seeking for clarification from blacksmithing expert Carmen Lega. Carmen Legg examines the relics and discovers a surprise discovery. These are remnants of bush scythes going back to the mid-1600s. The discovery calls into question long-held historical time frames, implying that human activity on Oak Island began earlier than previously thought. The date of these bush scythes contradicts known settlements, leaving a mystery about who used these tools and for what purpose. Surprisingly, the team considers the possible consequences of discovering ancient tools exploring the prospect of Oak Island's history unfolding gradually. Carmen's expertise pushes the crew to reconsider conventional narratives, allowing them to pursue new lines of investigation on this fascinating island. As the artifacts point to a time frame that predates the documented settlements, the team considers the possibility that Oak Island's story is more complex than previously thought. The age-old tools reveal a mystery background, encouraging the team to dive further into the island's mysteries and questioning prior assumptions about its history. A 900-year-old stone well, what specific mysteries could surround it? Jack Begley, together with archaeologists Laird Niven and Helen Shelton, starts on a trip to investigate the mysteries contained under the 900-year-old stone well on Lot 26. Their goal is multifaceted, including pumping out the well, carefully dirt cleanup, and a comprehensive analysis of the contents for precious relics. The reason for this mission stems from recent disclosures of heightened silver traces discovered within the well, which adds levels of mystery to its potential significance. And you have to remember that Oak Island is somewhat remote. So where would you put something that you, you fancied or that you thought was precious to you? Well, you might hide it in an old well. As the team arrives at Lot 26, a visual inspection of the well reveals an unexpected discovery. Despite its appearance of being very full, the well's inside is surprisingly clean. The incident sets the scenario for a thorough examination as the team seeks to uncover the secrets hidden within the ancient structure. The decision is made to begin the extraction procedure, and Jack Begley is in charge of scooping up the debris, a task that offers the promise of revealing crucial answers. The layers uncovered during this process become the focus of attention. The well has a peculiar composition with rounder rocks placed against angular stones. The team, led by Laird Niven, notices the uniqueness of Lot 26, which dates back to the 11th century. This lot has already set itself apart with elements such as a paved area in the swamp and a structure mimicking a ship's railing, which challenge preconceived conceptions about the island's past. Despite the lack of fast solutions, the crew recognizes the importance of the clues they find. Oak Island, noted for its enigmatic past, appears to be exposing layers that question established narratives. The intriguing promise of discovering the truth behind Lot 26's mysteries drives the crew forward in their search for answers. Later in the day, archaeologists Emma Culligan and Helen Shelton established a sifting station for the dried well spoils, which is a time-consuming process that requires precise examination of each layer. This careful technique results in a spectacular find, an unusual metal item. The relic, which resembles a nail at first glance, is intentionally shaped, prompting conjecture. The team analyzes the likelihood that it is a tightened, hand-wrought nail associated with enormous sailing ships from centuries ago. To probe deeper into the artifact's past, the team intends to use advanced procedures. A CT scanner is proposed to examine the artifact's structure, providing insight into its composition and maybe uncovering hidden information. Carbon dating is also on the agenda, with the goal of more precisely determining the age of the artifact. This discovery calls into question accepted chronology, implying that there was human activity on Oak Island prior to the reported settlement in 1795. The consequences of this revelation echo throughout Oak Island, generating debate about its origins and the numerous layers that have yet to be discovered. The crew realizes the artifact's potential to rewrite the story of the island's past, opening up new areas of investigation and asking questions that defy simple answers. The artifact eventually makes its way to scientist Dr. Krista Brousseau, who specializes in solving the secrets of old materials. Dr. Brousseau uses a scanning electron microscope to examine the artifact at magnifications up to 200,000 times its true size. The CM not only determines the chemical composition of the item, but it also helps determine its age and possible geographic origin. The study shows an important detail, the absence 
of manganese. This discovery suggests a pre-1840s origin, which corresponds to the team's desire to solve the riddles of Oak Island. So there we have a nice piece of iron. No manganese, so again, we, we do use that as a marker that it's uh, pre-1840, most likely. Carmen Legg's estimate of 1650 acquires credibility, and the team finds themselves on the verge of making a finding that conflicts with accepted timeline and gives light on an era before documented settlements. Lot 26's antiquities are more than simply relics. They hold the key to revealing Oak Island's secrets. Each discovery brings the crew closer to a complete knowledge of the island's complicated past. As the relics are further analyzed and scrutinized, Oak Island's riddle deepens, promising a narrative that defies expectations and provides a glimpse into an ancient past hidden in mystery. As a new day begins on Oak Island, bringing with it the prospect of solving a 228-year-old treasure mystery, the Legina brothers Rick and Marty and their team are motivated by the hope that their efforts will lead to answers. The Garden Shaft, which is currently being renovated by Dumas Contracting, serves as a focal point in their search for Oak Island secrets. As the day begins, the team determines the depth of the shaft, indicating that they are roughly 23 feet down and intend to install additional sets. Despite ongoing investigations throughout the island, the most promising operation takes place in the Money Pit area. The Garden Shaft, which is thought to be connected to the original Money Pit, offers an enormous number of possibilities. Recent finds, such as wood samples dating back to 1735 and high levels of gold, add layers to the mystery. Excitement surrounds the team as they embark on a multifaceted operation to examine the shaft's potential. The garden shaft's connection to a potential void or chamber is critical. Rick Legina, Scott Barlow, and the team hope to reach the bottom of the pit, uncover the original workings, and possibly discover clues to Oak Island's mysterious past. The Dumas crew, entrusted with repairing the shaft, works hard to clear a passage for exploration. The team excavates using innovative technologies such as the Enactin Spectrum 1 or 20 high-definition camera. This sophisticated instrument enables them to monitor the operation and provides a 360-degree perspective of the subsurface environment. The camera can operate in low light and has a high-powered zoom, allowing for a close look at the tight location. The excavation of the garden shaft marks a major shift in the search agenda. The team is eager to discover what is beneath the ground, hoping to find hidden chambers or tunnels that may contain the key to Oak Island's famous wealth. The excitement grows as the shaft descends 44 feet and the team prepares for a historic moment, entering the money pit underground. To be underground in the money pit where so many people who have come before us had that same experience. And I think life is all about shared experience. Rick Legina considers this a dream come true, having been fascinated by the Oak Island mystery since he was a boy. As he puts on his safety gear and prepares to descend, his emotions are high. The underground trek has the potential of revealing truths hidden for millennia. The experience is shared with the crew and feels like an ancestry passed down from those who came before, sustaining the spirit of the Oak Island mystery. Descending into the money pit underneath, Rick is astounded by the preserved wood and the history it represents. The layers of history and witness to human determination in creating the original paintings produce a profound sense of amazement. The crew recognizes the importance of this shared experience, which connects them to the searchers and the original depositors who went on this incredible journey. Roger, who is leading the team through the underground adventure, provides insights into the history beneath each set, the preservation of the original work, as well as the possibility of further structures beneath the existing depth, thrill the crew. Overwhelmed by the encounter, Rick muses on his boyhood belief in Oak Island and the realization of his desire. As they stand in the garden shaft, the team senses the possibility of new discoveries. The layers of history are revealed, and the underground trek becomes a moving episode in Oak Island's ongoing drama. The garden shaft, with its riddles and revelations, spurs the crew forward, anxious to find answers and uncover the secrets hidden beneath the surface. The Legina brothers and their colleagues are grateful for the unique opportunity to investigate Oak Island's depths. The underground adventure is a watershed moment in their lives that will be remembered forever. The search continues, motivated by the hope that more investigation would reveal the mystery that has fascinated generations, the elusive treasure of Oak Island. Now the whole Oak Island team is buzzing with excitement as Drill DN 11.5 approaches near the treasure zone, 
which is 80 to 120 feet deep. Charles Barkhouse and geologist Terry Matheson are on site, keeping a close eye on the drilling process. At a depth of 78 to 88 feet, the crew believes they are on the verge of making an important discovery. The atmosphere is filled with anticipation as they measure the borehole and Charles and Terry debate the results. Mike Bolton, directing the drilling operation, relays the fantastic news. Borehole DN 11.5 has reached an open space or void roughly 90 feet below the surface. This discovery sparks a wave of anticipation among the team members, indicating a possible breakthrough in the search for Oak Island's buried treasures. Charles and Terry note DN 11.5's alignment with previous boreholes, including DM 12.5 and DN 13.5. The east-west positioning indicates the presence of a structure. The discovery of a 90-foot deep vacuum draws interest in potential links to other tunnels or chambers, adding to the money pit's mystery. The team quickly chooses to suspend the drilling and notify Rick and Marty Legina of the wonderful finding. The treasure zone, high gold values, trapped air, and voids all come together, presenting a tantalizing chance for a big find. Rick and Marty arrive on time, anxious to learn the latest from the Money Pit drill program. The discovery of a void at around 90 feet below grade heightens the anticipation. The team considers the effects of this discovery and its possible connection to the bigger structure, beneath Oak Island. So, over there. I was doing my run to 100. Right. Right at about 90 feet. Broke through something. Open space, 90 feet below grade. Right. There's a void down there. Wow. The excitement grows as they think about the possibilities of intercepting another piece of the structure, possibly linked to the massive amount of gold discovered in the money pit. Terry Matheson's theory of being at the top of a tunnel gathers traction raising hopes for a watershed moment. To confirm the nature of the void, the crew decides to extract the core and investigate the materials discovered. Each emptiness or chamber discovery adds another layer to the Oak Island mystery, and the team is ready to uncover more secrets circulating beneath the surface. As the core is studied, it is clear that they have reached a significant void with wood bits indicating potential structural parts. The discovery of wood within the core compels the scientists to extract a sample for additional study, raising concerns about its age and origin. The wood sample is analyzed using an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer at the Oak Island Interpretive Center. Emma Culligan, an archaeometallurgist, shows the XRF data, which reveal predicted elements such as iron, manganese, titanium, calcium, potassium, and aluminum, all of which are plentiful on Oak Island. The obvious outlier, however, is gold, which was identified in minuscule levels. This result is consistent with past gold discoveries in water samples from the money pit. The link between gold in the water and gold in the wood sample strengthens the team's belief in the probable treasure location. Rick Legina, Craig Tester, Laird Niven, and Emma Culligan gather for a scientific report at the Oak Island Interpretive Center. The gold discoveries in both water and wood samples signify a watershed point in the search for Oak Island's treasures. The story grows significance as evidence accumulates, directing the team to suitable places for additional investigation. The significance of these results, together with the narrative that unfolds, emphasizes the value of ongoing study and the quest of proof. The team remains hopeful that this discovery may lead to the long-awaited solutions to the Oak Island enigma. The exciting possibility of discovering the treasure at the bottom of the garden shaft strengthens their determination and dedication to the ongoing quest. Oak Island Saga takes an exciting turn with the start of a probe drilling operation at the garden shaft. Dumas Contracting Limited is in charge of the efforts with the goal of discovering highly profitable resources immediately outside the structure. The shaft, which is presently being rebuilt, has shown promising results with water tests finding significant trace levels of gold and the possibility of a connection to the original money pit. If there is some sort of connection here, they need to know it and we need to know mm -hmm. it. If we get lucky, this will tell us. Marty Legina shows excitement, viewing this as a watershed moment in the actual treasure search. The crew examines prior void findings and speculates on speculative chambers related to the money pit. Now, at a depth of 55 feet, they utilize a strong hydraulic earth drill to undertake probe drilling in various angles, hoping to reach the emptiness and unearth further signs of human activity. Brandon Vanderhoeft and his team collect soil samples and wood fragments while drilling. Rick Lagina underlines the significance of these items, particularly the wood, considering the significant gold values found in the 
the area. The wood samples will be analyzed using XRF technology with the hope of uncovering more information regarding the treasure's location. The next day, Rick Legina receives an update from Emma Culligan, the team's archaeometallurgist. She shows that the wood samples from the garden shaft contain a significant concentration of gold, validating the team's hopes. The gold sticks to the organic composition of the wood, and Emma's accuracy is thought to be 100%. The team is overjoyed with the findings, realizing the importance of this discovery. Emma's talent to uncover gold is hailed as a superpower, and the results are spectacular and fantastic. The discovery of gold in the wood adds another dimension to the ongoing search for Oak Island's wealth. The Legina brothers are hopeful and grateful for the scientific approach to the search. They recognize the garden shaft's unique possibilities and emphasize the need of learning from previous missteps. The team applauds Emma for her role in breaking the wonderful news, which marks a good turn in the search for the truth on Oak Island. All of a sudden, a rumored well stirs up confusion among the members. Rick, Alex Legina, and Billy Gerhardt travel to Lot 11 near the northern edge of the swamp, guided by Tom Nolan's information regarding the rumored well. Their dig seeks to unearth clues to the 228-year-old mystery. Gary Drayton, armed with his metal detector, joins the team to search for relics and potential treasures. The discovery of a rosehead spike, hand-forged prior to the Money Pit's 1795 discovery, raises doubts regarding its relationship to the well discovered by Fred Nolan over four decades earlier. As they dig deeper, they discover an old oak relic resembling a hook. Gary feels that may be related to block and tackle devices used for lifting big items, dating it to 1650 to 1690. This hook's potential use raises questions regarding the well's purpose and whether it was involved in the hidden of important cargo. The team recalls a similar 17th century bunk hook found in a different region earlier in the year, suggesting a connection between multiple sites on Oak Island. As they continue the dig, the absence of predicted stones in the well leads the decision to invite Tom Nolan in for additional information. The team emphasized patience in the Oak Island search and the significance of acquiring more information before moving forward. In a separate meeting, Gary, Drayton, and Billy Gerhardt confer with Carmen Legg, a blacksmithing expert, about the iron hook. Carmen recognizes it as part of a block and tackle system used to move big objects, lending support to the notion that there is a lot of activity around the well. The age estimate of 1650-1690 adds another layer to Oak Island's fascinating past. Everyone is filled with the expectation of Tom Nolan's arrival and the hope for more information about the nature of the well and its possible connections to the island's historical activities and mysteries. Rick Legina, Tom Nolan and their team continue their research of Oak Island with a new excavation adventure on Lot 13, which is located northeast of the Interesting Marsh. Their attention is on a strange characteristic known as the quadrilateral, a geometric structure of unclear importance. The team's excitement is evident, spurred by the belief that this attempt would reveal important answers to the island's mysterious history. As the excavation advances, the team discovers a surprise find, blue clay. The presence of this blue clay brings back recollections of Oak Island's history. That's a bit of clay there. This stuff? Yeah. That could be blue clay right yeah. there. Where have you seen that color before? During the original major excavation of the Money Pit, in 1804, a layer of blue clay was used as a sealant to keep water out of the shaft. This surprising discovery raises the possibility that the quadrilateral was manipulated by humans, similar to the deliberate sealing witnessed around the Money Pit. Dr. Ian Spooner, a geoscientist, lends his knowledge to the exploration by analyzing the site and deciphering the story hidden behind the layers of disturbed clay and burned wood. The team considers the idea that the quadrilateral was more than a geometric arrangement of boulders. It could have served as a sealed building, such as a safe or container. The strategically placed rocks raise intriguing concerns about the formation's purpose. When the team returns to Lot 13 the next day, they are greeted with a surprise, a giant iron staple discovered during the excavation. This artifact, thought to be hand-forged, captures the team's attention. Carmen Legg, a blacksmithing expert, suggests that the staple played a function in a rope and pulley system. This ancient technology may have helped lift enormous rocks into place during the building of the quadrilateral. To further understand the mystery around the staple, metallurgical study is required. Emma Culligan undertakes a detailed study showing that the artifact is mostly made of iron, 98%. The elemental composition contains trace amounts of silicon, aluminum, manganese, calcium, sulfur, 
and phosphorus, indicating old furnace technique. Carmen Legg's claim that the construction is older than expected raises interesting questions regarding what happened on Oak Island in the distant past. As the team deals with the new knowledge, a sense of anticipation dominates the air. The objects discovered, the blue clay, the burnt wood, and the iron staple, each add a piece to the puzzle, revealing details about Oak Island's hidden history. The underlying question remains, what purpose did the quadrilateral serve, and how does it fit into the island's larger narrative? These findings are watershed moments in Oak Island's ongoing story. The team remains committed to additional investigation, diving into the island's secrets. The aim is that these items may unlock the gates to Oak Island's fabled past, revealing not just the quadrilateral's purpose, but also the treasures or mysteries hidden beneath its surface. The team, now led by Rick and Marty Legina, together with fellow landowner Tom Nolan and Craig Tester, resumes their investigation into the huge quadrilateral. The quadrilateral, located more than 400 feet north of the marsh and marked by a collection of boulders, has long piqued the team's interest, implying a potentially ancient origin. Their investigation focuses on the northeastern corner of the quadrilateral, where they find items and a layer of blue clay. This blue clay, reminiscent of the sealant discovered at the Money Pit, raises concerns regarding deliberate human manipulation of the area. As the team explores deeper, they find a big iron staple that appears to be part of a rope and pulley system. Emma Culligan's metallurgy investigation reveals that it dates back to the Middle Ages. The discovery adds to the puzzle, implying that the quadrilateral could be more than just an arrangement of boulders. The team continues their excavation and discovers charcoal lodged in the quadrilateral's walls. This discovery opens up the possibility of carbon dating, which could tell when this feature was produced. With each item and clue, the crew gets closer to figuring out the purpose of this unusual arrangement. The tension builds when Gary Drayton discovers a bent piece of heavy iron. Some speculate that it is a splinter of a cannonball. If confirmed, this discovery could provide a significant clue to determining who designed the quadrilateral and for what purpose. The team chooses to continue its excavation to the quadrilateral's southern part in the hopes of discovering more artifacts and learning more about the structure's origins. As they dig deeper, Rick Legina discovers a small sliver of glass, maybe going back to the 1700s or even earlier. This discovery, which is more than 10 feet underground, calls into question the quadrilateral's historical significance. Dr. Ian Spooner, the team's geoscientist, believes they may have reached the bottom of the feature, implying that additional excavation may not reveal any new insights. Despite this, the team considers the relevance of their findings, which validate Fred Nolan's conclusions concerning the stacked stone feature's presence. As the day comes to an end, the team considers the meaning of the big quadrilateral. The artifacts, blue clay, charcoal, and iron staples indicate intentional human activity, but the complete story remains unknown. The team's determination to unravel Oak Island's mysteries continues, one dig at a time, in a journey that combines history, mystery, and the thrill of discovery. The Oak Island team's careful efforts, equipped with technology and unyielding determination, have confirmed long-held fears. The objects and structures discovered invite us to recognize that Oak Island's mysteries are more than just stories, but tangible remnants of a buried past. However, as the explorers approach the sea horizon, solid solutions evade them, leaving space for speculation and anticipation. To be noted, Oak Island is still a puzzle that creatively intertwines history, legend, and possibly even unexplored chapters of human civilization. The relics, such as the cannonball fragment, suggest an intentional modification of the landscape, raising concerns about who directed these efforts and why. The search for answers evolves into an exploratory voyage, with the method being as important as the destination. As the excavations continue, one can't help but wonder, are we on the verge of unlocking Oak Island's mysteries, or are we just touching the surface of a historical mystery that spans time? The quest continues on Oak Island, where reality and folklore intersect, and the passionate pursuit of truth promises to reveal the island's mysteries piece by piece. If you are a fan of content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow us for more.